Amen. Amen. We can have our seats. Hallelujah. You are most welcome to the house of the Lord. Thank you so much, our worshipers and the people that are helping us capture pictures and everyone that is here this morning. Thank you so much. We are coming towards our days of, of celebrating the homecoming. At times we, we, we make these announcements, but uh, the response, especially to the members here, is a little, you know, thin. But I want us to, to be part of all this, that we enjoy the homecoming. Because homecoming is about you. People are going to come back home, but they need to find people at home. When you go back home, the other time I was talking to one of, the old women in the in the in the town of Busia, and she happens to be a person of our place because I come from Central Uganda. But she told me she grew up from a family where there were about thirty children of the same man, and so the house was so big. Uh, but uh, 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 apart from that, they were even having trees around and they were having birds, and the birds were making a lot of noise, and the children. We are making a lot of noise. So the old man could rise up and say, the children are shouting for me and even the birds are shouting for me. But she, later on, uh, people went on dying and, you know, the old man died. She told me this time when she goes back home, when she goes back home, there is not even pers a person to come and welcome her. So it, it's very sad when you go home and you don't find people. But we thank God that you are here. Somebody say, I am here. Because when people are coming back, they, are, they want to find you. They want to see you. They want to enjoy life together. So this is time for homecoming, beginning from the 30th of this month. I don't know how many days towards the homecoming. Uh, people are so much conscious about the World Cup. When is the World Cup starting? Today. Wow. <laughs> So people are so much concerned about the World Cup. And which teams are starting? I don't know. I've, I've lost track of the World Cup. I remember the World Cup that I enjoyed the most was 1990. I watched. I was in senior, senior five. I just joined a school where there was a television. Because the, the school where I was, there was no television. So I went to another one and we could sit on bricks. And we enjoyed the World Cup. It was... That time, I think Cameroon went, you remember Muse, Cameroon went up to almost a quarter, quarter, uh, quarter finals, and it was very wonderful for us. But uh, which, which countries are playing today? Qatar and Senegal. So I believe most of you, the Arabs, uh, you, are <laughs> you are supporting Qatar. And others, for us, the Africans. For me, I don't, I'll never support any other person except a, a black man. I'm not racist, but I want to see somebody black in the field. Somebody say amen. I, I'm, not, I'm not tribalistic, but of course, we want to be represented. In fact, the other time I told people, the day the African people go out of the World Cup, that's the day I stop watching because I'm not interested. I'm not very interested in that because I want to see my people there but we also have a homecoming so this homecoming is starting from from the 30th of of november i don't know 20 10 days because today is the 20th of of november and we want to welcome all the the students who have just come back from senior four and some schools i think are stopping to to, to go to school i think uh the latest the latest the latest are going to come back on the 25th and they are going to leave there the senior sixes to, to complete their exams. So it's going to be warm. It's going to be, many people are going to be around us. Our children are going to be coming back. We have choirs. They're going to prepare. At the end of the third service, we are going to prepare. And I want to encourage you, if you want to join any, any, any group, better come and join. There is a worship team, glorious gospel singers. We have the women, the women's ministry choir, which is called the Dokas Choir. And so... You come, come and be there, come and, and, and part time. Some people you are not, you may not be there full time, but you come and part time. Kubako, Yangok Bekeche, Yomuchi, Mudokas, Dukeyo, Maka Wakuku Ako. You see, 
Because some people say, hey, I don't want to be there. You know, when I go there, they're going to catch me. They're going to hold on me. No, you come for a season. You sing for some time. Some of you have got very good voices. In fact, as we are singing, you say, ah, pastor is off key. Pastor is off. That pitch is bad. You see? I mean, me, I started in music. You do. So you, you know a, a lot of things. But better come and, and put that into practice. Put, come and show us your talent. At times they, they make shows and people come and show their talents. At times I watch the EGT, America's Got Talent. People have got talent in the world. So at times many of you people, you are seated on your talents. Nobody uh, is lacking a talent. Possibly your talent has not been shown somewhere. You could be very good at... <laughs> Recently, they told me there was one of our members here. He has a ta- she has a talent in eating. She has a talent in eating. I don't want to mention her name. I may, not, I may disturb her CV of, of, of marriage. And some boys have got very good talents in eating. So you can finish, you know, two loaves of bread in a, in a minute. So that is a talent. I cannot finish. Yesterday when we were here, there was a, ma- a boy who was making some sound. He was making some sound upstairs. And it was sounding like a, a pusscat. I said, what is- where did the pusscat come from? So later on, we-, we understood there was a man who was up there. And for him, is, you know, I told him, that is a talent. I told people around me, that is a talent. If you can make sound of an animal... And people cannot differentiate you from an animal. There is a man in Rwanda who made a, a complete CD of the sounds of animals. He can sound like a goat. He can sound like a duck. He can sound like, uh, you know, a cat. And he can bark like a, a dog. He can, he can mow like, like a what? Mowing like a what? Hey, hey. <laughs> you don't know those sounds. <laughs> the sounds of animals. You have to know. What, but for you, say you, the, the, cat, the cow is crying. Cows don't cry. There is, the, 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 there is what, uh, you know, there is a sound that they make. So it's very important for us. You come and show us the talent. And uh, in fact, when we come to the 25th of December, we shall be having a very powerful show here. We want to hold a very big Christmas show in this place. Somebody say amen. So as we are closing the year, we... We need to, to celebrate Christ. We need to celebrate Christ. Yesterday I was watching television and I saw a very wonderful woman, but she's being driven on a bed. And when there was riots, you know, around Kampala, she was shot in the back and she cannot stand on her feet. And so, and she said, I'm here. She doesn't have any assistance. And I said, God, if God keeps you, People, if God keeps you, because at times we're moving. The other time when there was some problem in Busi, I don't remember when uh, there was tear gas around. I was coming on foot and people came running through the corridors. Uh, my family was stuck up here and I said, let me go and, and stay with my people there. Because if it's about death, better we die, all of us, you know. <laughs> I don't want to stay when I'm crying. In fact, when we are... Uh, Time is, uh, I think about flying, you know, I, I'm, 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 I have that aviophobia. I fear, I fear heights. But when we are with my family, it's okay. We just die together. So I was, I was coming and I find young people passing through the corridors and they were running away from the security. And for me, I'm walking on foot. And so anytime a stray blade could come and catch me. So Many times God keeps us and we are here and we don't even appreciate. So the, the other woman is married and I, I said, God, what, what, how, how is the marriage going on? And she said, my husband is very supportive. And may God bless that husband because some people, when they see their women uh, having problems like that, they abandon them and get others. But for, for the men, when they have problems, the women stay. Mokama Iba Zubabachal. You know, these women, our, our, our mothers, and they're very endure. They can wait upon those, you know, lousy men, and eh? they, are, they are urinating on the bed, and for them, they, don't, they, can, <laughs> they can put up with them. But for a, a woman, a woman, 
One time I saw a, another young man who got a problem, whose woman, whose wife got a problem when they just come out of the honeymoon. And the man has endured, and the woman does not even have senses to understand now where she is. She was put on television. And uh, the, the man, you know, pushes her on a wheelchair. And I said, that man is a hero. Because many men would have left. And they have all the reasons, a thousand reasons. At times you pray, you, you always pray for your family that God may not put you into such temptations. Because some temptations are real hard. And they say, what am I going to do, God? So I, I pray, at times I'm here and I'm praying for my family. I pray for my wife, I pray for, for the children. Because there are things which, when they come, you, 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 you are pushed to the wall. You are so desperate. You are so sad. So, I'm talking about homecoming. And uh, I want you to, to get into the spirit of, of receiving our visitors. Get into the spirit of, of assisting. You come and give us a hand. If you have a mattress, if you have a, uh, that grace of welcoming people, the people can welcome in a very good way. They can... So they know how to welcome people. Others, when you look at a visitor, it's like he has come to, you know, to collect their debt. So, you know, every one of us has got special grace. So you can come here and you say, me, I'm going to welcome people. You have a smiling face. You have, uh, some people have been created with smiling faces. Others, we don't have smiling faces. We are just there. We are like soldiers. We are like, <laughs> and when we come to the border, it is intensified because border people have to be very cautious about the people that enter the country. So it's very, very, you know, it's about talent. It's about how God has created you. Recently, I was in set and I saw a policewoman I've never seen. And she, she was a traffic officer and she smiles at people. And she says, you know, the vehicles. Shoo, shoo, shoo. And the people just respond. They, they, they don't make, <laughs> they don't make, they don't have big problems. So, uh, you know, th those are talents that God puts in people. And so we, we, we want to come here and we have all this together because everyone has got identity. Everyone has to have a home where they are born. I've been sharing about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet. And Jeremiah is the biggest, uh, it's the biggest book in the prophecies. It has about 52 chapters. But when they're introducing Jeremiah, they're talking about his family. They say, Jeremiah, the son of Helukia, of the priests of Anathos. They talk about his identity. They talk about his address. They talk about Jesus Christ and they say, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. He had friends there. His family was there. Samuel was somewhere in Lama or some, some other place. You know, Elijah, many people say Elijah just came on the scene and he was just prophesying. No, they say Elijah, the Tishbite. He comes from Tishbo. There are some people that were in that place. So people are always identified by the places where they are born or by the places where they hail from or by the places where they build their houses. And so even us, even if we are all born again, you are born again, but where do you pray from? I pray from Busia Miracle Center. I pray from Rwaga Miracle Center. I pray from Elmwood Pentecostal Church of, of Busia. I'm from Watoto Church of where? Of Kampala, east, west, or south. So people have got where they come from. And so it is important for us to come and identify. It is important for us to have a home. And in a home, that's where you find parents. You find pastors. You say that one is my pastor. You say, Pastor Emma is my pastor. Pastor Anser is my pastor. Pastor Dixon st spoke to me one time and I was encouraged. And so, you know, if you have a home, that's where you find all those people. I was thinking in the morning when I was coming, and I said, what is the use of a pastor in, in a home? Because a pastor serves like a parent at home. Because they are the ones who see what you are going to do. They encourage you. One of the things that pastors do is to shepherd the people. They shepherd people. They look they guide and counsel. 
The Bible says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He takes me to the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Though I walk through the, the valley of the shadow of darkness, I shall fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff were used by the shepherds of those days. And when the sheep could go astray, there was a stick to pull them come back to the flock. And the staff at times was for a preventing and protection. It was protecting them against the foxes, against the lions. When the bears and the lions and the foxes and the bad animals could come to devour the hyenas, could come and take the, uh, to, to come and devour the, the sheep, the shepherd could run and hit them. If you have ever looked after animals, you know what I'm talking about because you have to have a stick. That's why many shepherds, that's why many hardest men, that's why many people who look after animals, they, they have that culture of walking with the sticks. They move with them, honey. You know, they can hit you. That's why There is a, a certain man who was boarding a bus. And for him, he thought, you know, <laughs> you know, because when they are entering houses, they leave their sticks outside. And so when he entered the bus for the first time, he left the, the stick outside the bus. And so they're riding, they come to Kampala. So he comes out and says, where is my stick? He said, you old man, where did you leave your stick? He said, I, when I was entering, I left my stick outside. So he thought maybe the stick is going to be following. You know, the hardest uh, men, the shepherds, they are always moving with a stick for protection. They are protecting you. So if you have a pastor, we pray for you people. We protect you in the spiritual realm. Somebody say amen. So you need somebody to cover you, to guide you, and to counsel you. On Wednesday, we have the pastor coming here to guide people, to counsel them, to pray for them. At times, the, the enemy comes against you. The enemy comes against you, not because you're a thief, not because you're a bad person, but the enemy comes to attack the people of God. The demons come when you're sleeping. The Bible says when people slept, the enemy came and sowed bad seeds. Sometimes the enemy comes and puts debts on you. He comes and puts a bad name on you. He comes and puts demons on you to come and disturb your marriage. When you're moving, when you're walking. Because the demons are like flies. They're like insects moving around. They can come and just cling on you when you're moving. And so what do the pastors do? When we come here and we're preaching the, go the gospel to you, this word of God cleanses you. This word of God protects you. We cover you in the spiritual realm. Somebody say amen. So don't, 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 don't run away from your pastors. Come and share your experiences. Come and share the bad experiences. Come and share even the good experiences with us. If you are entering your house, come and tell us, Pastor, you prayed for me and I entered my house. Oh, I prayed. There was fasting and prayer and I prayed and God has answered my prayer. It's important for you to come and give us a testimony to show us how the things are going on in your life. You want to get married? Come and tell us. Don't just come. Today you are single. Tomorrow you are married. We say, well, hey, why are you working with that girl? Say, this one is my wife. Don't you know? No, we need to know how you get married because at times in marriage you may have some challenges and you always come and tell us, Pastor, this woman is eating all the food. So we come in and we advise accordingly. Somebody say amen. And of course it is important because as me, I do a lot of counseling for what is called the premarital counseling. I counsel people who are going to get married. I talk about the children that they're having before they get married. How are you going to handle them? I talk about their culture, their professions. Because some of us have got mixed culture. My wife is coming from the West. Me, I'm coming from Central Uganda. And I've got some roots from the Eastern side of Uganda. And so our culture was a little different when we were getting married. She loves animals. The first time when we had animals in, in the... She started with one with, with, with chicken. Then she went to goats and she bought a cow. And so the cows multiplied every day. But as they were multiplying, for me, I was crying. Because they, they are throwing a lot of dung and they ate all the grass in the compound. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so I could wake up in the morning and I'm, and I'm, you know, at times it is raining like it is this season. For her, she's smelling good, you know, the compound. For me, I'm seeing dung. I'm seeing that. In fact, the people that have grown up 
in the in the places where they look after animals like the Karamojong, the Itesos, and the this western side of ours, when they pass a house where there is dung, it smells good for them. My Jaja was loved, you know, she was a grower of coffee. This time when I enter any house and it is smelling coffee, I just remember where my grandmother was. And I'm excited and I just feel at home. I just, just, you know, subconsciously it has been written on me that when I smell that I feel just good. So it was like that and, you know, we are there and we are struggling. And, you know, these animals of yours, they are mowing in the, mo in the morning, in the, in the evening, they come. They, 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 you know, they, they are jumping around and uh, they, are, they are eating things. One time I was here from prayer and fasting and I bought three chapats and I was going to break my fast. And I put them outside, coming to pick a cup of tea from the house. And I went back and, and there's, there was nothing I said. Who has taken my, my, my food? I went around. The children were still young. They couldn't be that wise to, to pick the, the food. And so we, I, I was just there and I, I lost track of everything. But in the, late in the night, after, was it after one day, we see an animal jumping. And, uh, and we treated it and we we poured water on it because it was very uncomfortable in the whole compound. Then we remembered and said, well, maybe this is the animal that ate my chapats. Because for them, the chapats don't move so well. Their digestive system is not like ours. They want grass. So they, it ate the chapats and the paper that was wrapping the chapat. I said, Kale, what did the chapati zang? And then I will put so we treated it and you know it was fine so the animals were all over now we we after some time we 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 we, we started to agree and when we agreed we god blessed us and we bought land today it's about 13 acres and we transferred the animals there and the animals were multiplying and we bought another piece of land and we bought another piece of land buy and buy and buy and buy so the differences in culture today you know, I've, I've become a blessing to us. Somebody say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Why? We, we, when you come to us now, uh, we, we, can, we can speak to you, we can counsel you. Uh, many girls and many men from the western side don't want to marry from here. They fear. Why? Because for you, you don't love animals. Maybe you are like me. Because you, you don't have the culture. And they are, they are right because they even, they, they even go ahead that every, every child that is born in a family, the uncle can give them a cow. The aunt comes and gives them a cow. For you, what are you going to give them? When you marry, you, you get your wife and you are, you are in Kampala or you are in Busia. You forget about the in-laws. You don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't look after animals. So that's why at times we need to, to speak to people. But for the few that we have spoken to, their families are doing so well. Somebody say amen. So that's why you need to come back home and you see your pastors and you speak to them. Talk about the success. Talk about the challenges in business. Some people, you do a lot of businesses, but you don't know how to handle. The way you handle your money. The way you handle your property. The way you handle your children at home. All these things are good solutions in the word of god you know the word of god is full of wisdom this bible talks about your life from genesis to revelation it has got the wisdom of god counselors in the world can do some work but the counseling that is done from the bible is the best counseling forever and ever and ever because the bible says the word of god is test tested seven times before god speaks to people he has tested the, his word his word cuts through generations the word that was relevant many years ago in the times of Moses is still relevant even up to today. Very relevant. You check the Bible. Go and study. You are going to find there the hygiene. You are going to find there the science. You are going to find there the history. You are going to find there the, the geographic mappings. All the things that we studied today, they have got solutions in the Bible. When you go to the courts of law, you cannot challenge a person who has been in charge 
and they're walking in the laws of God. Why? Because even the laws have been, you know, uh, aligned to the Bible. That's where, because in the laws of God, that's where they talk about not committing adultery, not murdering people, not stealing. And those are the laws of Uganda. Those are the laws of the countries. And even the, you know, uh, giving out money to your brothers and sisters when you are, when you are giving them out loans. The, the Bible prescribes everything. And so that's why it is important for us to use the word of God as a yardstick for us to go on into the things of, of life. The Bible says, you shall teach me the ways of life. You shall show me the ways of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So I'm talking about the homecoming. And of course, we, we are going to, to, to narrate the history. This church started many years ago. In 1990, the people that were here are now very few. The people of the 90s are now counted on, on, on my hand. They cannot even reach 10 in this service. We have Mama Mega, we have Mama Grace, we have Mzee Stephen, possibly Irene, uh, who was little, little. There now she's a grown-up woman. Very few of them. This Bosco here was, was a very young boy. By the time it comes, he was still in secondary school. And so, uh, we, we have gone through all those ages. Uh, Buruma was, was a very young man. Today's an old man is keeping the door. You see? So, some people are not even born by that time. So, the, you know, Geoffrey, Grace, oh, Grace was there. So, we, we have a few people that, uh, Jen, Jen is there. Jen, Jen was 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 a little sick but she was healed in this church amen so when you come we are going to give testimonies we are going to say this is what the lord has done in our lives hallelujah so we, we see one another and we we celebrate our victory in christ uh, our chairman is just behind there muse laban and is the one that is taking the events of the homecoming and so we are preparing, even at the end of the third service, we shall be having a meeting. What are we going to do? We are going to see how we are. We are going to prepare all the things we are going to do. So it's very important for us. But one of the things we are going to do is to feed the people that come. When a visitor comes, when a visitor comes, every tribe, every language has got a proverb about a visitor. Many of us have got a proverb about a visitor. Some people say a visitor is a rumor monger. Jo Mugeni Mugei. What they see, they go back and say, hey, 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 when I went there, they, they mistreated us. I don't know what, what proverb the Samyas have got about the, the visitors. Mugeni Akolaji. What? Mug. Hey. <laughs> home, home. Yeah, la, la. Hey. So when we get visitors, we, we check our house. We can we, we, we cook better. Not so. You know, recently we had visitors and I, I was talking to my wife. We had to do a lot of renovation in the house. We had to put new toilet seats. You know. And you know, they just went there for two times. But now the toilet seat be belongs to us. The house is better. Praise the Lord. So, that, that's why we, we need to have visitors. In fact, you put yourself in a position of inviting people. Come here at church and seven night to come and visit me. Because when you challenge yourself, when you challenge yourself, some people, when, when they see a pastor coming, Oh, a member says, hey, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It's, it's like they're saying, stop there, don't come. Stop there, don't come. No. We want to see those days in the 80s for the people who got saved in the 90s. Everyone knew where his brother was coming from. But today, the people, everyone, some people put big houses, 
Some, some have got small houses. You don't know where our brothers are coming from. Hmm? So they just come and appear in church and they disappear. So if, but if you have visitors, you, you, you know, you, there is a way you can improve your lifestyle. You buy new chairs. On Wednesday, we shall be having some visitors at home. But I wanted to buy new chairs. How many hours are they going to stay on the chairs? Two hours only. And the chairs are going to remain mine. Guatagara chairs have again. Ojakube and Angolin, Olina Canyale Munumba, Canyale Mumumani, the cobwebs. You are, you know, you are not going to improve your lifestyle. Now we are going to have visitors. Today for us, we have started building the wall. We are collecting firewood. We are, we are going to buy some food. And you see, so that we can welcome the visitors. And you know, out of that, God is going to bless us. Somebody say, Amen. You know, the money we are having, if we don't eat it with other people, that money does not multiply. Kambabulide. Give and shall be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men bring unto your bosom. When you give out something, then God is going to bring other things. When you empty your house, God is going to fill it. When you give out clothes, God is going to bring more clothes to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some people you have things which don't even use at home. You, you are having boxes. You are having... Uh, some people today, you are married for 20 years. And you are still having the gifts that were given to you on your wedding day. Some people you stopped producing children. Ten years ago, you are still having those, the nappies, are they called nappies? And baby showers. And small blankets for your baby. Now what, what you call your baby. Your baby is like this man who was playing. <laughs> the, man who, the man who is picking pictures is called the baby. Because that, <laughs> he was the last man. Eh? So you, you, you have babies who were 20 years. <laughs> and we are keeping their shirts. When I look, at times we, we, I'm checking around and we see, we see some of the clothes of, of Karen. Small. I don't know why we don't give them out. We are supposed to give out those things. To other people, new mothers that are producing young kids. <laughs> but I saw you are going to explain to me what ye means. Ye, you know, do you expect more children? Today, children are very expensive. <laughs> Children are very expensive. Let me tell you people. Children today are eating a lot. Today escort has become a very common word in Uganda. Daddy escort. Escort. They wake up in the morning and all they know. Even those people, those ones that are still circling. The first word to speak is escort. So in the morning, they know, you know, daddy is called, you know, these days, those days of leaving 5,000 to the, the wife, you have to leave 5,000 to the wife and 3,000 to the children. My children open up for me. The gate, we have some children, our grandchildren. But after opening up the gate, because when I hoot, they know daddy has come back. But after opening up the gate, they come at the door and they say, what have you brought for us? First time I was very angry and I said, oh, those are bad manners. But, you know, <laughs> and I stopped bringing so that I, they open, they open for me without, you know, expecting much. But you know what they do? If I, if I take some time without bringing, I can hoot and I hoot and they come and they open later. They say, we've been watching TV. We have not been hearing. You know, they, they bring all those excuses. The TV sound has been so high. But the moment I start a season of bringing things home, 
It is now a tug of war. It is a struggle because the one who comes first, I've got that, that, that character. The one who comes first is the one who, who, who gives others. So it's about you to make your ear very sharp. Pipi. So now the children are very expensive. Today it's not about, it's not about, I'm producing grace, I'm producing praise, I'm producing prosper, I'm producing protein, I'm producing, the, hey, those children are, are supposed to go to school, they're supposed to eat, they're supposed to, to, to be on a border border, and uh, <laughs> when you go to a taxi, man, and you have six children, the way they can look at you these days. Hey, mama, chichi, okendawa. So and some of these poor are selling the sodas and the sweets. They just give them. And by the time you turn, your child is enjoying a sweet and say, I already did the sweet. So if if you if you are not ready <laughs> about the children, it's very important. Now, we, we want to do one last thing, people, and we, we call it a service. We want to, to raise some money because we have an assignment to buy a uh, sauce. The other services are going to buy food, they're going to buy rice, they're going to buy posture, they're going to buy matoke. They're about, but for us, the first service has been assigned to buy a cow. Somebody say a cow. What we know is a cow. We know even if it is a bull, it has to be a cow. So we are going to buy a cow in this service so that we can serve our visitors in the name of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you. You contribute something that can make us feed our visitors. Remember, there is always a blessing. There is a blessing that is going to come to us in the name of Jesus. Those people that have got money, that is a big blessing. But you can also promise us. And you say, no, I'm going to bring mine. I'm going to bring 100,000 going to bring 50,000 uh, maybe in two weeks in, in two days or three days because we don't have two weeks now it's just about 10 days only so it's a little late we are we are sorry about that but we can do a crisis management event we can bring whatever we are having and we know how to put it together and raise money so if there's anybody you have a hundred thousand you have fifty thousand you just raise up your, your hand and you see what we are going to do about this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me, let me pray that you we do the thing very fast so that we, we go for the second.